Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Rubin with another episode of Ad Hoc with the Doc. Thank you for joining us. I am honored to be here with a friend and colleague and wonderful physician, Dr. Santosh Rao. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Rao, you are a board-certified medical oncologist. You specialize in genitourinary oncology, and you're also the medical director of the Integrative, medical, uh, the Integrative Oncology Center at Banner MD Anderson in Gilbert, Arizona. Correct. 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 Wonderful. And I know of the work you've done and are continuing to do because um, we've uh, shared patients before, and everybody speaks so highly and wonderfully of, of your work. And I visited your center. It's lovely. It's on a lovely campus. It's designed beautifully but take us through what a typical first patient visit to the integrative center would look like sure thanks um, mm -hmm. so we do a variety of things mm -hmm. so different people will come for different reasons we pretty much span prevention of cancer mm -hmm. all the way through cancer survivorship so on the prevention no? okay. side um, there's a lot of uh, uh, work that's being done on uh, what we call our tobacco recovery program okay so some people will come in um, for a very multidisciplinary program using health psychology some medications um, acupuncture mm -hmm. to help with um, with tobacco cessation wonderful um, on the integrative side we have now four integrative providers I'm one mm -hmm. of them okay and so we, on an initial visit, you know, somebody will, will basically do an intake where we talk about what are your concerns. And everybody's at a different, um, you know, stage at where their cancer is sure. and their treatment. So a lot, it's very personalized. Um, and it's really just kind of assessing, okay, what are your side effects from treatment? Mm -hmm. What are your concerns? Mm -hmm. Some people are just interested in prevention. Prevention of recurrence? Prevention of recurrence. Okay. Uh, it may even be prevention mm -hmm. of cancer, but usually prevention of recurrence. Um, diet, uh, what your stresses are, and what how you relieve your stress. Okay. Sleep, uh, issues related to spirituality. Big, okay, interesting. Exercise, and then natural supplements. Um, many of our patients come to us because they have all sorts of questions. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sorry, do they self-refer most of the time, or are they referred mm -hmm. from other oncologists? Or They're interview? referred from other oncologists right okay. now. Okay, but they will ask for a referral if they need one. Got it. Um, and then we will go through all those things, and if we can address all of those areas, we will. Otherwise, we'll have a follow-up. And then we have a team, which is great. So we have a health psychologist. We have yoga practitioners. We have multiple acupuncturists, oh. massage therapists, um, various people, dietitian. Okay. So we want to use all these different people, and we'll personalize the use of these individuals for what that individual needs. So that's how a visit goes, basically. Sure. Do you have any naturopathic oncologists on staff? We don't. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a number of naturopathic oncology or naturopathic students okay. rotate. Um, and I have great respect for naturopaths and naturopathic oncologists. I know that we've talked about uh, patients before mm -hmm. and we have a collaborative relationship. It's wonderful. Um, it's something that has been brought up uh, but I, I have found that it's not been easy to penetrate mm -hmm. for a couple reasons. One is um, having broad, you know, unified uh, um, uh, approval sure. on bringing in a naturopathic oncologist. You know, we work in a very conservative environment. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, there's a kind of a fine line there uh, in terms of what will be well accepted and not. Um, and then I've had trouble justifying, you know, the 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 cost part of it, sure. because we cannot bill insurance, but all our programs are billed through insurance. Yeah, that has always been uh, a stumbling block for us is sort of intermingling the insurance versus the cash-based world. Right, and I can't explain it to my mm -hmm. colleagues. Mm -hmm. So when, yeah. I've, when I have told my colleagues, they, they don't understand. They don't understand what naturopaths bring to the mm -hmm. table. And, and I feel like I do at least better than they do. Mm -hmm. So I explain to them that, look, you're not a pharmacist, right? Mm -hmm. So why do we need a pharmacist? Mm -hmm. We've studied all these things in medical school. They're a specialist in that area, right? And same thing with the naturopath. Their, their area of expertise doesn't completely overlap with our area of expertise, and there's some things they know better than I do. Well said. Well, thank and you. And they, could um, they, they couldn't really understand that. Yeah. And then the other part of it is, you know, how am I going to tell a patient, you need to see our naturopath, but it's going to cost you money. Yeah. We didn't know what the demand would be. But um, personally, I'm in favor of that. And I know a lot of others Absolutely. are as well. 
Well, that's one stumbling block. I imagine there's been several along the way. What are a few key stumbling blocks that you've overcome or maybe that are still in your way, if you will? Well, I think that there's certain things that we can't do in mm -hmm. our center. For example, we don't um, offer medical marijuana. Okay. Okay. That's just part of being in a... You mean recommendations, not the actual product. Right. Well, we rec recommend medical marijuana. Oh, got but it. But we have to send somebody out to get it. To get it, right. right. Oh, so you're saying it's not... You don't have a dispensary. Correct. It, okay. Yeah, so that, that would, would be, be a big deal. That would have been a big deal, yeah. but um, those kind of things you just can't offer in a, mm -hmm. in a main you know, cancer center. True. I think other things that I... Think I it's a, hold on. I think it's a wonderful idea, though. And I mean, thank you oh, for yes. broaching the subject because the oversight and the ability to really work with the patient one-on-one -on, -one on uh, the, the types and how to use it, et cetera. So, okay, interesting. I think someday that'll mm -hmm. that'll be uh, better accepted. Yeah. I think it's just politically, we're not quite there yet. Okay. Um, well, I think it's great that you're, that there's not a stopgap for you to be able to make a recommendation. I'd though. be all for it. Okay. Um, but beyond that, I think, you know, we, we, we are conservative in the sense that we want to do what we think is not only scientifically evidence-based, but also well accepted. Those things are not exactly the same thing. To some people they are, but I think that sometimes we often will do something that's not quite you know, scientifically proven, but is well accepted. Well, and also you know? we know clinically works. And I think you and I have talked about that, which, you know, right. you're a physician and you, just because there's lack of data doesn't necessarily mean lack of efficacy, but that might be a stumbling block in an academic institution. In right. And, and, you know, more than anything else, um, it, it's, it's a closed environment. So because it's not a private practice where you're really just dealing individually with patients, mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. uh, dependent on and have to answer to in many uh, occasions to your, your colleagues who are um, consulting you. And that's good. I think it can kind of actually strengthen the practice. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you may not do everything you just feel like. Um, you have to substantiate it. And I think sure. all those things can be healthy. Agreed. But it's just the pace at which you have to move is really okay. dependent Understood. on where the science is. Got it. Wonderful. Well... You are certainly a unique practitioner, and I'm very curious from, from your viewpoint, from where you stand, what's the outlook then for uh, integrative oncology from, uh, from, from your perspective? What do you see? Yeah, I think that, um, first of all, it's so well accepted now. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas when I started, it was something that I had trouble talking about. Now, everybody talks about it, mm -hmm. and there are many people who are in some way or another, even if they don't say they're an integrative practitioner, are interested in doing research in some of these areas. Mm -hmm. So it's become in vogue. It's not difficult to tell somebody you're interested in integrative. It actually can be a job creator instead of a job killer mm -hmm. that way. Interesting. So I think well, it's more popular than it ever was. Patients are interested. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think where we're going though is going to depend on how much funding we have for research. I think if you look, and I'm talking from an oncology perspective, sure. There are so many billions of dollars spent on oncology research and drug development, and I feel like that's far ahead in outpacing the research in these other integrative areas, especially in things like natural supplements. Mm -hmm. And so we're making great strides on you know conventional treatment, which is amazing. But if the integrative side is going to catch up at all, it has to it has to catch up in in terms of research. Okay. Especially now that we're getting more and more precise, what we really need to know is the mechanisms mm -hmm. for how these things work. I think testing and personalizing and really being very precise with how we apply things. We don't even understand the dose and the effective dose for a lot of natural supplements, for example. We don't understand the mechanism of action for things like acupuncture and Reiki. There's so many things we don't know. Yeah. And so when you're working in a system where we're really, really, really fine-tuned with our understanding of cancer and, and drugs, mm -hmm. and then on the flip side, you have all this stuff that you think works, but you have no idea about the precise nature of how or, or how to apply it. That's a misfit. So I feel like eventually that's where things have to go, and then we'll get a better appreciation of where and how important some of these things are. Wonderful. I think it sounds like a wonderful intersection because we can certainly extract an isolate from a plant or call it a natural supplement and then figure out the mechanism that we're dosing it upon and then figure out you know the effective dose and based on the parameters of the study but talking about reiki or acupuncture and mechanisms of action i'm curious if you think that 
science has to catch up to those mechanisms before we can elucidate what we believe the mechanisms are because those are so energetic in nature. And I mean, if we stick a needle in, into an area that may have an anatomical specialized neurological structure, that's one thing, but Reiki, very curious how somebody who's so interested in energy medicine would see an intersection here, where do we, you know, early 2019, do we think that there even could be a scientific explanation for Reiki if that were subjected to study? I think so. Okay. I think so. Okay. I think that um, it's not a popular thing to talk about. Even on the integrative side, sure. um, it's considered just kind of, we don't understand. It's too soft? No, mm -hmm. I think that because people don't understand the science behind it, it's 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 thrown into this bag of you know does it even work or is you know is it placebo etc cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's but it's interesting to it me. Seems how, highly advanced, I would say, if we were to look into it. Yes, but at the same time, it's also um, very popular, mm -hmm. and so it's interesting to me how it's offered in so many places, even though yes. we don't understand yes. it. Good point. Um, but for me, I, I think that uh, we can learn a lot by by studying things that we don't understand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think the other part of it that I find challenging, there's various different energy um, healing modalities, and I've studied many of them. And I think that the way they're taught and the explanations that are given kind of fly in the face of science. And, I, I, you know, it's fine if people want to kind of um, believe in in the way that those modalities are explained. Mm -hmm. um, but I would like things to have kind of a common scientific kind of expression where we don't, you don't have to believe in something that um, is very difficult to explain. You know, and I think they lose people probably there. Anybody who actually studies any of these things, it, it gets a little bit, um, a little out, out there. And so I, I think for me, as somebody who actually has done these things and mm -hmm. experienced them and um, seen how they can affect people, I really do believe there's something real. And let's start from there is, is really getting a sense of what's, what's going on and what are the real clinical impacts. And some of that stuff has mm -hmm. already been studied, mm -hmm. but I think just more, 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 more elucidation. Um, and, and, you know, major centers like Cleveland Clinic does a lot of research using Reiki um, in Wonderful. various uh, areas. And so I, I don't think it's necessarily so alternative you can't study it. But that's one example of, of a modality that um, is not accepted by everybody, whether it's conventional medicine or even in the integrative side. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a lack of understanding or the way it's explained. Well, Dr. Rao, thank you so much for being on Ad Hoc with the Doc. I appreciate it. It's been wonderful to sit and talk with you in this regard. And your words really seem truly spoken from the heart of a true integrative oncologist. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really welcome. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.